I'm damp, but I'm ready. So this is what your thumb looks like after you slam a car door on it. I should find a different hobby. Yes, it does look painful, and yes, it was very, very painful. Now it's just, it's just a dull ache, but there you go. Um, so that's what happens when you try and move a car before the traffic wardens get to you. Anyway, enough of that. Um, so it's June, so I thought I would do a vlog, which I haven't done for a while. Well, it feels like an age since I last did a vlog. Um, so what's happened? Well, there's quite a few bits and pieces going off, um, but I wanted to show you a couple of little things that I've done first of all before I launch into my um, explanation about my website, about Etsy and about PayPal. So first of all, I've got a couple of things that I want to show you. So I'm going to switch over to my overhead camera and then we'll get started on that. My father goes to lots and lots of thrift stores, charity stores, all that kind of stuff on the lookout for old books for me because it's like a standing order. Um, every time he goes in he keeps a lookout because I need, for a project I'm working on, I need about 30 old books but they have to be a particular type of book. But anyway, enough of that. While he was um, searching he came across this. Now... It says, obviously, Preview 1949, and UFP um, is a, was a London-based company that used to um, preview movies from the big Hollywood studios. So rather than get trailers, this is what you used to get. You'd get, maybe get a trailer in a cinema or a Pathé News kind of thing. Um, but predominantly, this is what we used to get in the UK, and it's a book. Now, inside this book, I'll just are some beautiful photographs of the Hollywood movie stars. Now just look at this. So it says World Film Publications Limited, Grays Inn Road, London. And UFP is a United Film Publications, I believe. Um, and just, just look at what this book contains. Now, one of the things that I'm doing with these old books from the thrift stores and the charity stores is as I'm repurposing them for something else. But when he found this, he, he, he didn't have the heart to, to do what I've asked him to do with the books because he just thought it was just far, far too precious to destroy. And I'm so glad that he didn't. Because, I mean, just look at that beautiful photograph of Rita Hayworth. Now, I just want to draw your attention to a couple of things on this photograph. Now, bearing in mind, this is 1949, ladies. Okay, look at Rita. Now, there's an earring there. But what's this? Is that also another ear stud? Possibly. And can I draw your attention to her nails? Red and white. So striping on ladies' nails is not a new thing. It's been around for quite some time. And this book is just filled with some of the most glorious photographs of movie stars, some of which I've never heard of, some which I obviously have. Um, and it's just absolutely fantastic. I mean, just look at these pictures. I mean, look, look, oh, oh, and, and I just got so excited when I started to see this, and, and an eagle, look at that. See, I only remember her as being an older lady. Um, but I mean, some of these pictures, some of these portrait pictures are just stunning. I mean, look at that. Oh, they're just absolutely beautiful. And obviously, male and female movie stars you know, from the 40s, just beautiful. Esther Williams, you see, didn't recognise her in, out of a bathing suit. Just absolutely beautiful. Virginia Mayo, I, say, I don't remember Virginia Mayo. Now, obviously, a lot of people probably will, and will say, oh, yeah, I remember her. But no, there's, there's quite a few in here that I just don't know the names of. So, obviously, Bing. Um, you know, Lucille Ball. I mean, look at that, 1949 Lucille Ball. Just some absolutely... See, I don't know these two. I've never... don't think I've ever... I probably have. 
but I just don't recognise them. The names aren't that familiar to me, but I mean, just look at those beautiful portraits. Now, obviously, copyright laws. I would love to be able to share some of these beautiful portraits with you guys. Unfortunately, um, this was published in 1949, which means that it's still three years within copyright. This won't be out of copyright until 2019. So unfortunately, I can't do anything with this for another three years. And it's killing me. I mean, come on. I would love to be able to share some of this with you guys. And, and it's just, oh, it's just breaking my heart that I've got to wait three years. So we'll have to find something else. Anyway, so there's that. Um, and it's given me loads and loads and loads of different ideas that I could possibly do stuff with. Um, I'll, I'll find a way, trust me, I'll find a way without breaking any laws, of course. Right, the other thing that I wanted to do, now it's June, um, and I was going through some of my bits and pieces and I noticed that I was, I'd run out of thank you cards. Now I send out thank you cards to people who send me happy mail or uh, who particularly send me um, you know, nice emails, that kind of stuff, just as a thank you to people. Uh, and I noticed I'd run out. So let me just switch back over to my overhead camera again. So on Sunday, it was completely washed out. It was raining like I don't know what. Um, and no, none of us wanted to go out. Bentley didn't want to go out, Ian didn't want to go out, I didn't want to go out. So instead, I thought I would sit down and create some thank you cards. So what I did was I got two great big sheets of watercolour card. Uh, and these were um, 16 by 12 inches. Uh, and I just threw watercolours all over these pieces of card. And then when they were dry, um, I got some gold paint in a fine liner pen and I just went over the entire sheet. And then when that had dried, I cut them all down and turned these into little um what we call A6 cards, but I think you call A2 cards in the States. So they're literally only about four by six. So about postcard size, but just little top folding cards that I can customize. So I'm not gonna add any kind of sentiment like thank you on these because I might want to use them for something else. So these are just, they didn't take very long to do at all. So that was that set that I did, but I also did another set. So I now have 16 really nice thank you cards that I can send out to people or cards that if I want to just put a little note in um, and they took next to no time to create uh, and I didn't film it because it was one of those things where you know it was raining and I just wanted to sit and do something and there was nothing on TV and all that kind of stuff and I just sat and I did it uh, and occasionally we need to do stuff that we just you know we just do um, and, and I can't have my camera on 24 7 uh, unlike this morning when I filmed my intro um, but that took a lot of setting up and it took a lot of editing so you know and it was just a bit of fun but I can't do everything on camera um, so there will be things which I will be doing which I will feature not necessarily on the YouTube channel but on my blog and also I will share with you on Facebook as well so but these cards like I said they didn't take very long to do at all uh, and they're just a nice kind of little original piece of artwork all right there's there's eight which are virtually identical but each one actually is completely different because the watercolors in the background are completely different and the gold um, from the fine liner is different on every single one so there are unique little pieces of art Although they're very, very similar, they're everyone completely unique and individual, which I think is, is a nice little th thing to send out to somebody if you just want to say thank you or hi or how are you doing or thinking about you, that kind of thing. So, and I always like to have a stash of these um, on hand just in case I need to just write a quick thank you note or something to send off in the post. So. Those are what I think I will be doing is I'll probably do a new set and maybe only eight because I don't really need that many. Um, maybe you just like a full set of eight, maybe every month. So maybe I will start sharing those with you too. So in other news, uh, 
my YouTube channel, I upload videos to on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays, which means that I film, you know, during the week, at the beginning of the week and on weekends so that I've got the video footage ready to edit and upload when I need to. And I always put a complimentary post on my blog as well. Now, my blog, you can follow by clicking the link in the description area below the video. Um, but there's also links to my website where you can get access to my blog. There's also um, my online store, which isn't Etsy. Um, and that brings me to talking to you about Etsy. Now, Etsy is um, it's quite expensive to use. You have to pay to list items. Now, it's not a lot, but I do a lot of digital downloads. So I, if I put say like a hundred in the quantity box for a digital download. Every time somebody buys that, I get recharged because it renews the listing. So for every sale that goes through Etsy, when it automatically relists again, if it's something like a virtual digital download where there isn't a physical item, then I get charged every single time somebody buys something. Uh, and I also get charged a f processing fee for the payment that goes through PayPal. So I get a double whammy with Etsy. So, and obviously every penny counts these days because none of us are rich. And if you are very rich, then good for you. Um, but those pennies add up. And over the process of about a month or so, I can maybe lose 20 to $30. Um, and that's just on processing fees and on relisting fees for Etsy. It, it is quite expensive when all you're selling is stuff which is you know a couple of dollars or in uk pounds one pound fifty to lose three percent of that isn't a lot but actually it is when you're doing 10 15 that kind of thing uh, and i know it's all part and parcel of selling we all have to pay um but also i've got to pay tax on that too because that's income so when all said and done um Using a site like Etsy, yeah, it's great because everybody knows it, everybody trusts it, all the rest of it, but it's expensive for people like like us who put virtual digital downloads and that kind of stuff on there. So I wanted to kind of shift everything over to my own personal website where I will still only, I will still have to pay a payment processing fee with every payment gateway that I use, um, but I'll only have to pay once rather than twice. So what I will be doing is I will be gradually phasing out the stuff from Etsy and moving it all over onto my own website. And I'll put the link to my website just here. It's in the description as well, but I'm going to be doing that because, you know, I need to, I need to keep as much money as I possibly can, basically. Um, it's not that I'm greedy. But doing these videos takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of energy and it takes a lot of resources. Um, and I'm trying to kind of balance my life, my work life with my YouTube life and my online life, if you like. Um, I'm now only working three days a week. So two days a week I dedicate to YouTube and to creating uh, new products for me so that's my digital downloads because they don't create themselves you I have to sit and do them and that does take some time um and and so i'm now working two days a week from home on youtube so that's two days out of my job where i'm not earning money and i'm not earning huge amounts through youtube combined youtube online sales through etsy or, or my own website are keeping me going um, and obviously the lovely and generous and kind hearts out there that have also made angel donations so thank you to those lovely people um, and again I'll put their names at the end of the video too um, are helping me to create more for you guys so you know sales on my website on my Etsy site and also any angel donations that I get from you um, help me create more content for you guys to watch um, and that then it has a rolling effect that the more that I produce the bigger the audience and the further the reach that I get because you guys share you guys thumbs up YouTube um, starts recommending my videos to other people and I get new subscribers and the more subscribers I get the, the more people I get to to share 
and the more people I get to reach out to. So it, it is one of those self-perpetuating things, but I can't do it without your support and your help. So thank you to those that have bought from my Etsy store. Thank you to those people who have bought from my um, my main website store. And thank you again to those beautiful kind-hearted souls that have donated through my angel page on my website, which is all through PayPal. So PayPal money, when it comes in, you still have to pay a processing fee. Um, and PayPal at the moment are not my best friends because they have put a restriction on my account and I have got no way um, of being able to contact them without having to sit on a telephone waiting to get put through on hold for nearly an hour. Now, I've tried three times and given up at 50 minutes on each one because 50 minutes just sat there listening to droning music is no fun for anybody. Uh, and I have an issue with them. So they are going to restrict my account in in. Well, in a, in a couple of weeks, basically, which means that I will not be able to receive any money at all um, apart, or through PayPal. So that means Etsy, that means through my own website. So I have to try and find a workaround for that. Now, I do have my main business PayPal account, which is verified, which is gone through all those steps of making sure that I'm not money laundering for drug barons in Colombia or you know selling guns to people who shouldn't have them, which you know, is a different story altogether and not one that I want to go into right now. Um, but I, I need PayPal. So it might be that in a couple of weeks, if you see when you click through and buy anything on my website, that it goes through under a different name of Crafty Hands with a K, which is my business, my old business name, um, then it's still me. So you, you've not been duped or anything. So don't worry about that. Um, so that's PayPal. Now, what else was I going to do? Oh, yes. Um, now, my friend Linda Simpson uh, has challenged me for... Now, let me see if I can try and remember what the proper name is. I'm just going to grab my... Try and get Facebook up on my computer and just have a quick look. Now, this is a, a challenge where you have to share a piece of your art for seven days. So one piece of art every day for seven days. And you also have to nominate somebody every day to also do the challenge. Now, um, I don't normally take part in these kind of things because I think they're kind of, um, well, it's chain mail, basically. It's just another version of chain mail and I'm not a fan of chain mail whatsoever. It's called hashtag artist challenge. Um, but for this one, I've decided I'm going to do it. Now, before I started doing YouTube videos and that kind of stuff, I did quite a, a lot of stuff which I never filmed um, and I probably never even photographed. And I did a lot of samples and I did a lot of creating for the store for display purposes. So samples in the store. So I thought for the next seven days, I was going to share those. So today, no, not today, because it's Tuesday today, isn't it? Yes, today I did my first piece on Facebook. And again, if you haven't followed me on Facebook or friended me on Facebook, please do so. My Facebook profile, again, is in the description area below. Um, so just go along and just friend me. And then you also will get to see stuff that I do on Facebook, those projects that I don't necessarily film, and or even sometimes even bother putting on my blog. It might just be a photograph of something that I've created and, and just put it on Facebook. Um, so Facebook is probably like the catch-all place. Now, my blog, I do the... Um, the companion post for all of my YouTube videos, the creative ones, not the not the vlogs, because there's nothing really to say about what goes on in the vlog. Um, so, so my Facebook is one of those places where yes, you can connect with me in between the videos that I put up on YouTube if you want to. And and I'm on Facebook throughout the day. I've got the app on my phone, so I do read all the comments, all that kind of stuff, and and I try and comment, or, or at least like, or thumbs up, or give you a big heart, or whatever, to say that I've seen it. Um, because one of the other things with getting so many subscribers to your YouTube channel, and friends on Facebook, and all that kind of stuff, is that you get more comments. And those comments, you know, it's, it's only polite to try and reply to as many of those comments as I possibly can. And that's something that I normally try and do throughout the week. So, and Facebook is one of those things as well where I try and comment, I try and 
um, stay in touch with everybody as much as I possibly can do. So um, that's Facebook and that challenge, the hashtag artist challenge that I've accepted from Linda, my first one goes live today and I've already nominated somebody. Um, and it's a, a lovely lady um, based in the US um, and I do hope that she takes up the challenge because it would be nice to see more of what she does. So while I was going through some of my old samples and that kind of thing to work out what I was going to do on this seven day artist challenge, I came across a little project which I created um, about a year and a half, two years ago, uh, and I never filmed it. Uh, I don't think I even photographed it. I may have put it up on my blog. I don't know. I can't remember. And I don't really want to go tra traipsing through all the archives to have a look to see whether I did or not. But I've got it. So I'm just going to switch over to overhead camera now. And if you're a little bit squeamish, um, I do apologise for this. So, yeah, it's it's a dead fairy in a frame. Um, uh, and it was something that I'd created and, and literally forgot about. Uh, and this is an 8x8 frame. It's an 8x8 shadow box frame. And I'm trying not to get too much glare from the lights or from the reflection of the camera. Um, it's glass fronted, just like the other shadow boxes that I've, that I've done. Um, there's... You know, there's a 6x6 six six, um, shadow box that I'm going to be showing you a bit later on in the week. Um, but you've also seen some of the 3 inch ones that I do. This is an 8 inch one. Uh, and this was, like I said, created about 18 months ago. And it was just done one of those things that you get an idea in your head. Or you see something and you think, I don't mind having a go at that. And the, the little dead fairy skeleton is just made out of um, Fimo um, or air dry clay and then painted and distressed and then there's a little bit of um, netting around for a skirt and the wings are made from feathers and little paper fern leaves and that kind of stuff and in the corner there's a couple of um, pine cones and some petaloo flowers all on a piece of um, burlap which I've also distressed and yucked up uh, and I've also put like a, a little botanical tag um, yeah so this is the sort of stuff I've got kicking about that I've never shared with anybody. So this artist challenge will um, means that I can go through some of the stuff that I've done that I've never shared, look at some of my old art journals before I started making videos and I can share them with you too. So um, <clears throat> I'll probably put this up on Facebook uh, maybe tomorrow um, or maybe Thursday. So if you want a good another good look at it then you know, like I said, go across to Facebook and follow me on there or add me, request a friend, and I will and I will accept you as a friend. So the last thing I wanted to mention today was about the Mission Inspiration Facebook group. Now, the Mission Inspiration Facebook group, if you don't know about it, is um, a group where every month I put up 10 prompts that you can use as inspiration to create a mixed media project or an art journal page or anything else that you want to or you feel inspired to create from those 10 prompts. And I started this Facebook group in February, not February, January. And um, this morning I was very, very happy, ecstatic, nay, um, to see that we had clicked over into our 1000th member. So I want to say a huge thank you to everybody that's joined that Facebook group and has contributed their projects, their time um, in making that group a fun and safe place in which to create and to share. Um, we encourage each other, we offer hints, we offer tips. If somebody asks, we, we help as much as we possibly can. Um, and it's a great place to share as well. It's a great place to meet new friends, it's a great place in which to to seek inspiration and to see what everybody else is doing or what they've done with those prompts too. So once again, thank you so much to everybody who's taken part in that Facebook group. And if you want to pop along and see what people are doing, then I'll also put the link in the description area below the video. So that's all from me for today. I will see you all again real soon. Bye for now.